This video is for you if you are A, considering getting a 7 mil PRC, B, figuring out if you need to sell your current 7 mil, and C, if you're interested in knowing what all the fuss is about. Does the 7 mil PRC live up to the hype, or is it just another 7 mil Magnum? I review it for longer range hunting performance against seven other 7 mil cartridges. And I'll do it based on metrics including killing power score, windage, go no go charge, and weapon employment zone analysis. This is a video packed with information to help you and me answer the big question. Is the 7 mil PRC really that good? Welcome to the Red Kettle channel. This is where you get updates on product development and tips and tricks for efficient hunting. This video is all about the 7 mil PRC. Does it live up to the expectations or is it just hype? Before we get started, I suggest you combine this information with other sources to get both breadth and depth in your assessment. I shoot a 7x64, which is similar to a 280 Remington, but I've long been in the market for a more potent 7 mil cartridge. I originally had my eyes on the 7 mil Remington Magnum, but I'm intrigued by the 7 mil PRC. Not because I'm into true long range hunting, but because I think that even at regular hunting ranges, a ballistically superior cartridge will give me more options to shoot, a greater margin for error, and more downrange authority. Am I right, or am I wrong? Is the 7 mil PRC the ticket? Let's find out. But how do we evaluate the cartridge? I review it from four different perspectives. Core specs, killing power score, windage, go no go charge, and weapon employment zone analysis. I've decided to compare it with established 7 mil cartridges to understand if the 7 mil PRC is as fantastic as some folks claim. Here's a practical note before we get started. I'll create a blog post with all the diagrams and link to it in the description. That way you can interrogate them in your own time. Do post in the comments if you have any questions about details and calculations. For clarity, here's how I designed the test. I wanted it to be practical, so I based it on factory ammunition. And I wanted to focus on best of class ballistic performance for hunting, so I used data for Hornady Precision Hunter ammunition. I ran my last test based on similar sectional density values to get a like for like comparison for deer sized animals. Here I've gone with the heaviest bullet available in the factory ammunition to get the best ballistic performance. The 7mm PRC has been Sammy specced with an 8 inch twist, all the other cartridges are 9 or 9.5 inch. And that's where the PRC scores the first point in my view. The faster twist rates allow you to shoot longer bullets, which is important when you pick those long, sleek, high BC bullets. And as you'll see from this diagram, it's only the PRC that's loaded to shoot the 175 grain ELDX bullet. A quick test revealed that the stability factor for this bullet starts to drop below the optimal threshold when used in a barrel with a nine inch twist. This fact is not just about long range hunting, it's also relevant for folks like me who are soon forced to use monometal bullets. This type of bullet is longer due to the lower density of the material and it requires a faster twist rate to stabilize when compared to traditional lead bullets. That's one of the challenges I have with my current rifles and something I want to address in my next purchase. The engineers at Hornady have proved their worth with the 6.5 Creedmoor. It's one of the biggest successes in modern cartridge development, in my view, both performance wise but also commercially. Can they replicate that success with the 7mm PRC? The folks at Hornady highlight a couple of points about the 7mm PRC that are worth including. Here's what they say. It's designed from the start to allow long aerodynamic bullets to be used without having to be seated too deeply into the case. This results in less infringement on powder capacity and lends to high levels of accuracy and minimal extreme spread for muslin velocity. Well, firstly, it means you can make better use of the entire case capacity when using long bullets. And I think that's a real benefit given that most of the other 7mm cartridges weren't developed for today's long bullets. High BC or monometal, whatever. That's another plus in my book. Secondly, accuracy and extreme spread for muscle velocity are big factors when it comes to long range hunting. Accuracy is also a critical factor for longer shots and in strong winds, even if you're someone who doesn't engage in true long range hunting. It's great that the 7mm PRC is easy to develop accurate loads for. I don't have any data though, and to the best of my knowledge, none of the other candidates are inaccurate. They can all be accurate with careful load development. So I can't really award any points on that basis. Bullets are built to work within muscle velocity minimum and maximum, and it's worth checking how these cartridges fare. The ELDX bullets are designed to work down to 1600 feet per second. 
The 708 hits the minimum at 865 yards, the 280 Remington does it at 920, and the 280 AI does it at 965 yards. The rest were above the threshold up to the 1000 yards I ran the test data for. Based on other test data, I suppose the PRC would be the winner here, but as I'm not a long range hunter, all of the cartridges meet the minimum specs way further out than I'll take a shot. So now we tick the boxes for the foundational specs. Let's look at how the cartridges compare with regards to killing power score. In a past deer cartridge test, I used the killing power score. You have to be careful when using any kind of formula or any kind of threshold for that matter. With that said, I think the killing power score is a good indicator as long as you use it with other metrics and as a basis for a sound evaluation. I'll make a separate and more detailed video on the killing power score. I'll link to it here and in the playlist at the end of the video. Let's look at the scores. For the record, this table includes threshold for CXP4, which are thick skinned, dangerous animals. Maybe apart from black bear, which I don't have any experience hunting, none of these cartridges are suitable for CXP4 size animals, and certainly not with an ELDX bullet. This emphasizes the fact that you should be cautious when using these metrics. A lot more could be said, but I'll park that for another video. The takeaway here is really quite simple. The 7mm PRC is capable power-wise beyond what I'll use it for, but so are most of the other cartridges. The greater KPS score comes at a cost recoil. These cartridges are not heavy recoiling in the greater scheme of things, but enough that you can't get away with sloppy shooting positions. And by the way, the 7mm 08 and the 280 Remington are only here for comparison. They're not on my own list of actual contenders. At this point, we've seen the PRC tick all the boxes for CXP3 gain out to quite long ranges, but we still haven't touched on the big question. How does the 7mm PRC perform with regards to wind drift? In the Red Kettle Efficient Hunting Framework, we operate with three types of shot. Maximum point blank range, dialing for bullet drop, and dialing for bullet drop and wind drift. I won't go into the detail here, but mention two things. When I say maximum point blank range, I refer to both the horizontal and the vertical components, which are bullet drop, wind drift, and the maximum group spread. And secondly, compensating for wind drift is an advanced technique. Don't try something in the field you haven't demonstrated you can consistently and confidently do on a range. For scenario one and two, you want to understand how far you can shoot, given three components target size, wind value, and system accuracy. The target size is a vital zone or whatever part of the animal you've decided to go for. The wind value is a combined effect of wind speed and direction. And the system accuracy is a combined accuracy of you and the rifle from a given shooting position. Together, these three factors will help you calculate a go-no-go charge. I could talk a lot more about this stuff, but I'll reserve that for another video. Instead, let's look at two scenarios. A large deer vital zone of 10 inch and a bull elk vital zone of 18 inch. Yes, you can find bull elk with larger vital zones, but 18 inch is a good number for an adequate shot. And this is a comparison, so the exact number is less important than how the individual cartridges compare. First, let's look at the go no go charge for a 10 inch vital zone. The clear winners are the 7mm PRC and the 28 Nosler. For a 10 mile per hour wind, the Nosler looks a step worse, but it's due to the rounding and the resolution of the measurements. The Nosler gets to the first place by burning a lot of powder, and the PRC does it with a higher BC bullet. You could feed a Nosler a heavy bullet, but you'd have to get a gunsmith to build your rifle with a barrel in an 8 inch twist. Not even Nosler themselves do that in a factory offering. And I want to base this test on a practical approach as much as possible. Saying that, I have to play the devil's advocate, because right now anything 7mm PRC is difficult to come by. We'll get back to that later. Even if the PRC and Nosler take the first place, how do they compare to the other cartridges? Well, the index scores will help answer that question. Apart from the 7mm08, which is not even a contender, they're all in the 90s for all wind values. I must admit I had expected the PRC to leave the other candidates a little further behind, apart from the 28 Nosler. But it is consistently better, enough that it's a plus in my book. By the way, it's worth examining a specific example. Imagine a situation where you're able to shoot your system at 1 MOA accuracy, and you're hunting a large deer with a 10 inch vital zone. You know the maximum wind value on the day is 10 miles per hour, and then you can shoot the following distances without adjusting for wind. 7 mm 08, 245 yards. 280 Remington, 255 yards. 280 Ackley Improved at 260 yards. 7 mm WSM, 265. 7 mm PRC, 280 yards. 7 mm Rem Mac, 265 yards. 7 mm Shooting Time Westerner, 270 yards and 28 Nosler at 275. The PRC has 20 yard further reach than the 280 Ackley improved. It doesn't sound like much, but there's a different way of seeing the wind data. I'll get to that when we talk weapon employment zone analysis. 
Firstly, what about the same scenario for a bull elk? Let's look at the gono charge for an 18 inch vital zone, which is a good standard for that bull elk if you want to give yourself a healthy margin for error. For that size vital zone, under the same conditions, you're looking at the following maximums. 70 mm weight at 335 yards, 280 Remington at 350 yards, 280 Ackley improved at 355 yards, 7 mm Winchester short magnum and 365 yards, 7 mm PRC 385 yards, 7 mm Remington magnum 360 yards, 7 mm shooting time westerner 370 yards and 28 Nosler at 380 yards. That's about 100 yards further for all the cartridges and actually quite far given the wind conditions if you ask me. I want to stress one thing when we talk about these distances. What we're looking at here is linear difference. In reality, we've got to consider the effects on the ground you're able to cover, which means a circle rather than a line. And from that perspective, you can see the difference between the cartridges is going to be more pronounced. Here are numbers for how much extra ground you're going to be able to cover with the 7 PRC compared to the other cartridges. If you're considering opportunities 360 degrees around you. One thing about these go no go charts, I will call out that it requires you to deliver one MOA accuracy under field conditions, which is easier said than done. More on that in another video. I'm working checklists to help you with all that. I'll link here when I have more information. For all the data I ran no go charts for, the Nosler and the PRC in the lead, and the patterns are the same. As I said, in my book, the extra ease you're getting, especially when you consider the area, the PRC has enough extra horsepower that is relevant to me. I want to mention one thing. Shooting scenario one and two are based on the check of the maximum wind value on the day with an accurate wind meter. These numbers require you to be bang on when you set your ceiling. What if you are, or if you plan to be competent enough to dial for wind? That's scenario three. Well then in my view, the single best way to evaluate the cartridges is by using weapon employment zone analysis. Weapon employment zone analysis was developed by Brian Litz and the team at Applied Ballistics. I'm not affiliated with them, but I use their software. They've given me permission to share the results here. I'll link to the Applied Ballistics solver in the description. Long story short, weapons employment zone analysis can give you a hit probability for a given distance based on the standard deviation for key external ballistic metrics. The input side is an advanced topic and I won't go into details here. West is a powerful tool. I recommend it to all hunters. External ballistics is not just for long range hunting. It's about knowing the limitations of you and your shooting system and it's relevant for anyone shooting in open country. So you run that weapons employment zone analysis by inputting the standard deviation for multiple ballistic variables, including wind value, air pressure, and more, as well as the accuracy of you and your shooting system and the size of the target and the distance to the target. As I said, this type of analysis gives you an idea of how much room for error you have, which is what I've talked about when we reviewed the go-no-go -no -go charts. I've assumed one MOA of accuracy and run the test for a 10 inch and an 18 inch circular target. Then I changed the wind value in 0.25 miles per hour increments until I got to above 99% certainty for each cartridge in interval out to 900 meters. I kept all other input the same. As with the go no go analysis, the 7 mm PRC and the 28 Nosler take the lead. The main observation is that the benefit is higher the closer you are to the target. At about 500 yards, the closest competitor is the shooting time westerner and the difference is only half a mile per hour standard deviation. The data resolution is low when working with 100 yard increments for distance, but the data still gives you a good picture of what's happening. Here's my conclusion on this test. The 7 mm PRC is not a magic wand. Top of the range accurate gear is the foundation for long range hunting and shooting, but it's only the entry ticket. You can't get there without developing the right level of skill and experience. Having said that, great gear will give you more room for error. And if I were going for long range hunting, which I'm not, I'd want that extra edge and I would work to optimize all other aspects as much as possible. Even though I'm not a long range hunter, I still like to optimize. And to me, the added performance you get from the 7 PRC is a bonus, another point. It's worth noting again that your group size is a crucial factor here. I've gone with MOA, which is a practical minimum, but it's also a challenge to get there under field conditions. It might not sound like much if you judge by posts on internet forums, but remember, even if you have a half or even a quarter MOA rifle, you must replicate that accuracy from a field position, which is easier said than done. So is the 7 mil PRC really that good? The data shows it's marginally better, and these benefits are relevant if you want to optimize for performance in the wind. Still so new that ammunition and components will be scarce, 
which is a drawback, but it's probably also the case for at least the 28 Nosler and the Shooting Time Westerner these days. I counted 28 gun makers who do or will make rifles for this caliber, so I think it's a matter of time before that changes. I also think that the benefits of the 7mm PRC are substantial enough that it'll become relatively readily available. With that, here's my conclusion presented as three scenarios. Scenario one, if you already own a 7mm Magnum and you're happy with it, don't sell it, keep using it. Scenario two, you don't have a 7mm high performance cartridge, but want one or need one right now. In that case, you have four choices. Pick the 7mm Remington Magnum for pure availability. Go for the Shooting Time Westerner if you want performance without a massive penalty. Buy the 280 Ackley Improved if you want excellent performance from an efficient cartridge. And get the 28 Nosler if you want all the power you can get and have access to industrial quantities of gunpowder. Scenario three, if you have time to wait, go for the PRC for that extra performance and better options with monometal bullets. What will I do? Well, before I say that, I want to stress this. Whatever your choice, remember that a cartridge is a tool. It must fit into a deliberate plan supported by skills and knowledge. I use the efficient hunting framework to keep me on that narrow path. Well, in my optimization obsessed mind, the 7mm PRC is my pick. I'm not in a hurry. I'm also wondering if the 300 PRC is a better choice for an all round big game hunting rifle for CXP3 sized animal like elk and the larger African plains game. By the way, I mentioned several concepts. I'll make videos about them and add them to this playlist as I share them. Thanks for watching.